Welcome to the Daily BA, my name is Ryan O. Today, a interview with an evolutionary biologist named David Sloan Wilson. We captured this a long time ago. I've been sitting on it for a little bit. Specifically, I wanted to ask him about Eleanor Ostrom's principles and pro-sociality. This idea of pro-sociality is fantastic. Basically, how do we get people to work together, work for the betterment of each other and raise each other up? So with no further ado, let's start it off with my question to him about, do we see this in the field of behavior analysis? No, it's only they're just learning about it. Yeah. So, I mean, here's the, at this boot camp, and I think that uh, for a lot of the people who come to these boot camps, then uh, the founding figure is B.F. Skinner. And uh, there's a lot of deep knowledge about the Skinnerian tradition. That deep knowledge, I think, actually is to some extent a confining knowledge. I think Steve would tell you that himself. And uh, one of the things that takes place at a boot camp for a behavior analyst is a broadening of their own uh, perspective. That's what ACT does. And ACT itself is in the process of broadening from an Evo Psi perspective. So we should actually begin with, at the largest possible scale, with the history of science since Darwin, and not to spend a long time on it, but, uh, but uh, uh, evolution in relation to biology has developed more or less continuously. And so now evolutionary biology is an enormously sophisticated field. Uh, not so for evolution in relation to human affairs. So for complex reasons, that experienced a case of arrested development. And, uh, and so only during the last 30 years or so have people been approaching all of the human-related disciplines, basic and applied, from an evolutionary perspective using the same conceptual toolkit that biologists developed for the study of genetic evolution. The history of, of behaviorism is nested within that larger history, and Skinner himself actually was a pioneer and got a lot right. He was an evolutionary psychologist. But the history of the field, with behaviorism being deposed by cognitive science, and, and uh, uh, which Steve recounted to a degree at this, um, at this boot camp, then there was something called evolutionary psychology, which, which actually was in its own right. Part of the problem, a, a school of thought that was too narrow, and the full integration of psychology uh, only taking place now, uh, or just now. And, or you might say that it's in progress. And I think one part of the work that Steve and others are trying to do is to accomplish that integration and to, and to uh, have the BA community play a, a central role in it. So that's, I think, one of the exciting things that's taking place here. Yes, just wrapped up a new book, correct? Yes. 19 is the published date. Yeah. It's in my Amazon hopper. There you go. <laughs> um, what's new in it? What do, you, what do you have to say? Well, I can talk briefly about three books that uh, have come out within two years. Uh, my book, new book, is called This View of Life, Completing the Darwinian Revolution. And it makes the point that I just made to you that the uh, Darwinian Revolution will not be complete until it makes sense of everything associated with the words human, culture, and policy, in addition to the word, in addition to the word biology. So currently we have um, uh, a geneticist named Theodosius Dobjansky way back in 1975 said nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. Evolutionists love to recite that. Uh, what it meant was, was that there was a single conceptual toolkit that could be used to study all aspects of the biological world. And, uh, and so the Darwinian revolution will be complete when that same toolkit is used to uh, understand everything associated with humans. Uh, part of what's required for that is for evolution to go beyond genetic evolution. A problem in my own field was that the study of evolution became so gene-centric, as if the only way that parents, that offspring can resemble their parents is by sharing their genes. And so culture is an evolutionary process. Um, 
individual learning as an evolutionary process, which Skinner, this is what Skinner got right in his classic 1981 paper, Selection by Consequences. He made a connection between natural selection, genetic evolution, cultural evolution, and operant conditioning. All these open-ended variation and selection processes that led to behaviors that could only be understood by some history, either a genetic history or a cultural history or a history of reinforcement. And so that insight, combined with much else, is part of what it means to complete the Darwinian uh, revolution. So there's one book. Another book uh, published by New Harbinger Press is called Evolution and Contextual Behavioral Science. That's an edited book uh, with Steve and uh, goes a long way towards this synthesis. Uh, what we did was we took six major subject areas and we paired articles. Uh, one article written by evolutionists, the other article written by CBS authors, and they both wrote their article without reference to each other and then read each other's articles and then had a conversation which we video recorded and um, a transcript was uh, included in the book and the full videos are available online. So this is something we did to catalyze the integration. And then the third book, co-authored with Steve and our colleague Paul Atkins, who is a fellow of ACBS based in Australia, is called ProSocial. And it is a book-length account of this practical method that we have uh, developed uh, in order to help groups function better, to become more flexible, which is the ACT piece, and then to uh, implement uh, core design principles. This is where the Nobel laureate Eleanor Ostrom comes in to become uh, more pro-social as um, as groups. And day four of this boot camp will be devoted to uh, pro-social with me being on center stage. I'm very excited. Is that pro-social book out yet? No, it's finished, but it won't be out until October. Okay, fantastic. Looking forward to it. Yeah, very exciting for us. I, you made me think of another question, which is uh, how to kind of flip like your initial question, how prevalent is any of the CBS thinking in the EvoSci world? Hardly at all. Hardly at all. Uh, there's a real asymmetry there, in part because of uh, the organization that Steve created. Steve has many talents, and uh, one of them is to uh, found societies. And so thanks to ACBS, Steve has been able to communicate EvoSci to his colleagues. Uh, I started showing up at the World Cons way back, and then there was an EvoSci SIG. And uh, it's become uh, a feature of, of uh, ACBS Worldcons to include at least one plenary speaker who is an evolutionist. And thanks to this organization, and thanks also to the fact that uh, CBS is still a fairly small, self-contained community, then that kind of learning is possible uh, more so than the sprawling field of evolutionary biology. And that field, is it, it turns out extremely timid about extending their ideas beyond biology as conventionally thought about into the human realm. We hear a lot about how the human, human folks, people in the social sciences and humanities, are kind of phobic about evolution. Uh, what we don't hear about is that the evolutionists are kind of phobic about applying their ideas uh, into humanity. In other words, there's a boundary that is accepted on both sides for the most part. And uh, those who have crossed that boundary include uh, this tribe of people called evolutionary psychologists. But for reasons that will prove to be ironic in retrospect, they conceptualized the discipline of evolutionary psychology in a way that left Skinner out that left Skinner out. What they think of as evolutionary psychology are specialized modules that evolved by genetic evolution in our ancestral past and are triggered by current circumstances. And Skinner, along with other um, um, traditions, 
um, in the in the uh, blank slate tradition uh, were cast aside as something called the standard social science model, the SSSM. And uh, Steve and I have been, it's been one of our main priorities is to integrate them and to show how evolutionary psychology properly understood includes both a uh, modularity dimension and an open-ended dimension. And we actually use the immune system as a uh, as an example of this, because the immune system has what's called an innate component and an adaptive component. The innate component is, uh, is densely modular and specialized, does not change during the lifetime of the individual. The adaptive component is the antibodies, the selection of the antibodies that bind to antigens. It does change during the lifetime of the individual. And so the human behavioral system, like the immune system, has both an innate component that acknowledges the narrow school evolutionary psychology view and a adaptive component that acknowledges the Skinnerian view. So at the end of the day, everything fits together, but you'd never know that from the history of ideas in psychology. I've linked resources down below. I hope you enjoyed it. Please consider like, share, subscribing. It actually makes a difference. And if you have the time, go check out patreon.com backslash the daily BA. It's linked down below. First link, it's how you can support this channel and bring more content like this to you on your screens. That's your daily BA.